Hi everyone, Luke here from Weekend Tour Pros. We're back again with another golf ball review and I must admit I'm really, really excited to film this one because so many of you have been asking me to film this golf ball review over the last couple of weeks and where this channel is made by an average golfer for the benefit of the majority of average golfers watching down the lens, what else could I do but put it to the top of my filming list and get it filmed for you guys to see just what you think. So the golf ball we're reviewing today is the Titleist AVX. Now you could say that this golf ball is perhaps the cousin of the Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1X because it's Titleist's other premium golf ball offering, but they do claim it delivers some slightly different performance. So what we're gonna to do today is our usual ball test. We'll also compare it to the Pro V1 and I'll tell you a little bit about this golf ball before we get started. Right, let's get stuck in. So before we get into the studio and start hitting shots, I just want to tell you a little bit about the Titleist AVX golf ball. And what you can see on screen now is the kind of key data on this golf ball, but I've also put the Pro V1 in and the Pro V1X in as a comparison. So you can just see what the differentiator is between this golf ball and the other two in the Titleist family. So first things first, the AVX is a three piece urethane cover constructed golf ball. And that's very similar to so many of the other premium golf balls out on the marketplace today. Titleist claim that it delivers a very soft feel and that is reflected in the compression rating of 77 which puts it in the same ballpark to kind of the Callaway Chrome Soft, the tailor-made Tour Response and Titleist's own cheaper ball, the Tour Soft. In terms of ball flight, Titleist claim that this will deliver the lowest ball flight out of those three offerings that we're comparing to today and in terms of long game spin, so with drivers and the top end of the bag, you can also expect to get lower spin there and that might help us to generate a little bit more distance if we can keep the ball in the air. The impressive thing about this is though that Titleist claim that you won't see any drop off in the short game spin and you should expect to get the same high short game spin that you get from Pro V1 and Pro V1X as well, so we'll look out for that in the early parts of the test. Finally, it does come in both a white and a yellow color option. I know the yellow option is really important to so many of you guys watching down the lens. And in terms of the price point, it's exactly the same as the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X, £47.99 a dozen in the UK. Right, let's head down to the studio, set up the test, and let's start hitting some shots. Okay, so first shot here with the Titleist AVX. And what I'm expecting to see is it to feel a little bit softer than the Pro V1 because that's what Titleist tell us. But they also tell us to expect high short game spin exactly the same as the Pro V1. So expecting that to be really, really similar. So let's look out for those two attributes in this part of the test. Definitely is nice to chip with, by the way. That's one thing I would say. You guys, if you've watched my channel for long enough now, you know that I love the feel or a soft feeling golf ball. And this one definitely appeals more to me than the Pro V1. And it's delivering some really cool short game spin numbers. It does feel great. Okay, so let's baseline some numbers with the Pro V1 to compare against now. That's awesome, strike. Okay, so done hitting the 20 yard pitch shot with the 60 degree wedge with the AVX and compared to the Pro V1, my first impressions in the Bay are it might actually be spinning a little bit more on the better strike shots, which is really, really impressive because it's rare that I do a test and anything beats the Pro V1 in the 20 yard pitch shot. So yeah, really impressed that I got some of the highest spinning shots with the AVX. I also really, really enjoyed the feel. Definitely does feel softer than the Pro V1 and maybe sounds a little bit duller, but nothing too different. So if you do like the Pro V1, it's not massively different to that in terms of what I'm feeling on this part of the test, but definitely is a little bit softer, a little bit duller off the face. The only potential negative is I did potentially think that I struck a few of them a little bit better than what the numbers show. So maybe that softer feel wasn't giving me as much feedback as the Pro V1 as a slightly firmer golf ball, but that's the only potential criticism I've got. But let's go home and look at the data side by side. Right, let's take a deep dive in the data from that 20 yard pitch shot. Starting on the left hand side, you can see that my club head speed was about one mile an hour faster with the AVX, but the ball speeds were very, very similar with both of these golf balls. And as a result, the smash factor was slightly higher with the Titleist Pro V1. Ultimately, I am the biggest variable in this part of the test as a 13 handicap golfer trying to hit a partial shot and doing that consistently where strike is such an important factor in terms of these numbers. So do bear that in mind. 
The spin rate with the AVX was fractionally higher at 4561 versus 4382, but the key thing I want to call out here is that Titleist promised that the AVX will still deliver high short game spin, and we are seeing that when compared to the Pro V1, which is undoubtedly the highest spinning or one of the highest spinning golf balls that I see whenever I'm filming ball reviews in this part of the test. In terms of ball flights, the launch angles, the peak heights and the land angles, they're virtually identical. And again, I think if you asked me to repeat this test again, it wouldn't surprise me if some of these numbers flipped around but looked very, very similar again. In terms of the difference between the carry number and the total, which reflects that stopping power of this short game shot, we can say if we're objective that the Titleist AVX is stopping a fraction quicker, the difference between those two numbers being 6.3 yards versus 6.6 .6 with the Pro V1. But turning that into real world, that's one foot of additional shot stopping power. I don't think we'd notice that out on the golf course. And like I say, if I think if I repeated the test, it wouldn't surprise me if the numbers flipped around. So overriding conclusions in this part of the test is both golf balls are doing exactly what Titleist said they would do. The AVX is definitely keeping up with the Pro V1. And the only real difference is that slightly softer feel, which was definitely noticeable as I touched on in the bay. Right, let's move up the bag up to the pitching wedge. Okay, so just about to start hitting the pitching wedges with the AVX. And the two things I'm gonna be looking out for here are there is the difference in this golf ball where it talks about being very similar to a Pro V1 in short game, but offering a lot lower spin and longer distance in the long game. So what we want to see is where does that start to cross over? Is it in the pitching wedge? Is it in the seven iron? Or is it all the way up at the driver? So we'll be keeping an eye on that in terms of distance and spin. Also, we're really interested when we get home to look at the ball flight differences between these two golf balls to see if either one of them launches higher and gives you a little bit more stopping power. Because ultimately with a pitching wedge, what I care about is obviously having good distance, but the difference between that carry number and that total number, that stopping power on the green, I want to know that I can stop my wedges quickly and therefore aim at the target that I want to aim at on the green. So let's keep an eye out for that. Oh my God, that felt awesome. That felt good, again. Oh my, that's the best one in terms of flight that I've had so far. Okay, so just done hitting the pitching wedges with the Titleist AVX compared to that Pro V1. First thoughts in the bay are I think they're flying on really, really similar windows, and if they're not, it'll be proper nitpicking when we look at the data sets. The only potential difference I could notice is, again, that feel. The AVX definitely feels softer, and that continues in the pitching wedge, and maybe the AVX is spinning a little bit lower. Now, this obviously is a low-spin golf ball, but we were really keen to see where that drop-off is. It might be starting to drop off already, but again, I'm just nitpicking. I might see different when I look at the data in a minute, so let's go home and do that now. So this is exactly why I do my ball reviews the way that I do them. I love to give you my immediate feedback and my thoughts on the numbers that I thought I was seeing when I was in the bay and then come home and do this objective deep dive data analysis to show you what the numbers really said because actually sometimes my feelings are wrong and this time that is the case when it comes to the spin rate of the AVX. So starting on the left-hand side, you can see that my club head speed with both of these balls was virtually identical, but there was a fraction more ball speed with the AVX in the pitching wedge part of the test. And as a result, that smash factor with the AVX was a fraction higher. That spin rate, 7298 with the AVX, is virtually identical to the 7241 that I saw with the Pro V1. So we can say that both of these golf balls are spinning exactly the same. So when Titleist make those claims about short game spin, I thought that was only going to be on a short shot around the greens. We can definitely see it continues up to the pitching wedge as well. It'll be really interesting to see if we get a drop off as we move up to that 7 iron in a second. In terms of ball flight, Titleist also talk about this being a lower ball flight than the Pro V1. Actually, in this part of the test with a pitching wedge, it's virtually the same. If anything, it's a fraction higher. Now, I don't think you'd notice that on the golf course because we're talking about 0.1 of a degree of launch angle, three feet of peak height, and less than a degree steepness of land angle. But if we're being objective, the AVX is flying fractionally higher with a pitching wedge, not lower. In terms of distance, the carry number with the AVX is a fraction higher at 114.4 versus 112 yards with the Pro V1. And that overall package of stopping power with the pitching wedge is a little bit better with the AVX as well. The difference between the carry and the total at 5.4 yards is better than the 5.8 yards with the Pro V1. Again, you wouldn't notice that out on the golf course, but it is worth saying in objective data terms, the AVX is stopping a little bit quicker in my hands in this test. 
So my overriding conclusions on the pitching wedge, if you ask me which numbers I would take, I would take the AVX ones, but I think they're performing exactly the same and you wouldn't notice any difference out on the golf course. Let's see if things start to change as we move up to the seven iron. Okay, so seven irons with the AVX. Really keen to see if what carry number we get because if it's a slightly lower spinning ball, that might mean we get a bit of carry distance. I'm really keen to see if it does drop off in terms of spin too much compared to the Pro V1, but also to see if there is a reduction in spin, do we get a slightly better, higher ball flight that balances those two things out and still gives us similar stopping power. We'll also keep an eye on ball speed just in case there is a massive fluctuation between those two as well. So let's see what happens. That's the best one so far with the AVX. That's good as well. Ball speed again, good. Carry number three in a row, almost on top of each other. That's as good as I can hit it. It might be a bit tugged down the right, only a little bit. Okay, so just done hitting the seven irons with the tightest AVX compared to the Pro V1. First impressions in the bay, it definitely feels like it's spinning a little bit less. And it definitely felt like it was a couple of yards shorter through the air as a general rule. But again, we need to go home and look at that data side by side. It might have been that as I was getting a bit tired, my speed dropped a little bit and that might be the contributing factor. But also really keen to see what those ball flight characteristics say when we get home as well and see what the overall package of distance and stopping power is with a seven iron. Let's do that now. So this time my feelings in the bay were only 50% right and I'll explain that to you in a second. Now the really interesting thing about these two data sets is they are almost identical deliveries so they're really really good to compare these two golf balls with. Starting on the left hand side you can see that my club head speed was virtually identical with both golf balls and my ball speed and my smash factor was identical with both of these golf balls. Now in terms of spin rate Tightless claim low long game spin and we are starting to see that spin drop off a little bit here at 4574 versus 4828 with the Pro V1 and they do also promise a lower ball flight and this seems to be the club where they're just starting to flip over the other way round. You can see that the launch angle is a fraction lower, the peak height is a couple of feet lower and that land angle is a tiny bit flatter with the AVX than the Pro V1. Now the bit where I was wrong in the bay is that my feeling was that the Pro V1 was a slightly longer ball than the AVX. Actually when I deep dived into the data, the longest shots that I hit were with the Pro V1, but as an average across kind of 20, 25, seven irons that I hit with both of these golf balls, the average with the AVX was a slightly longer carry at 152.3 yards versus 151.3 yards. But the stopping power with the seven iron because of that lower ball flight and that fraction lower spin was better with the Pro V1. The difference between the carry and total being 11 yards exactly with the Pro V1 versus 11.9 yards with the AVX. So overall, about one yard of difference in stopping power, somewhere in the region of eight to 10%. Doesn't sound like a lot, not sure you'd notice it out on the golf course, but if you're looking for stopping power with a seven iron, I definitely think the Pro V1 is gonna be the better golf ball for you. But it is really good to see that we are starting to see the AVX differentiate itself exactly as tightly say. Let's see if that carries on with the driver. Okay, so with the AVX, we'll be looking for that lower spin and that lower flight to see if that happens here and if we can still keep the ball in the air and see if we can get some good distance still. Let's see what happens. felt awesome. Okay, so done hitting driver with the AVX and really tough to tell in the bay. I wasn't probably striking driver that well today with the Pro V1 or the, the AVX, so it's hard to pick out the good shots amongst them all. Definitely felt like it maybe was spinning a little bit lower, which is exactly what the ball's designed to do, but I don't think I was able to get as much carry distance out of it. Again, that could be my quality of strike, but we need to go home and let's look at the data and we'll do that now. 
So it's taken me until the driver part of the test, but finally the feelings I had in the bay are actually backed up by the data, hooray. Right, my club head speed with the AVX and my ball speed were a fraction lower, but I was starting to get a little bit tired. I'd hit well over 100 shots at this part of the test, but what we can see, the more, most important number here is the smash factor is identical with both at 1.44, saying that they're as efficient with the driver, regardless of which of these two balls you gain. The AVX is once again delivering that low long game spin, exactly like Titleist claim at 2 versus 3100. The one thing I must admit though, this is certainly not the lowest spinning golf ball I've had when I've been doing my ball reviews. So when Titleist say it delivers very low driver spin, that definitely isn't what I'm seeing in this batch of shots, but it wasn't the best struck batch of shots. And maybe if I was striking a little bit better at this part of the test, we might have seen a fraction lower spin. So just bear that in mind. The one thing we definitely did see though is that lower ball flight that Titleist promised. That launch angle at 15.2 is 1.2 degrees lower than the Pro V1. That peak height is 10 feet lower and that land angle is three degrees flatter with the AVX. Definitely delivers a much lower ball flight with the driver exactly like Titleist claim. So what does that mean in terms of distance? Well, the carry number with the AVX was a fraction lower because I wasn't keeping it in the air just as long at 204.1 yards versus 205.8. But the total number with the AVX at 224 yards is a fraction longer than the Pro V1 at 222.9. Like I say, I think if my strike was as good with the AVX as the Pro V1, I think we'd have seen a very similar ball flight. We might have knocked that spin down a little bit more and we might have got a couple of extra yards of total out of the AVX. But I'm really pleased to say that we've been able to prove the claims that Titleist make about this golf ball in this part of the test. Right, let's wrap up with my concluding thoughts. So I've got two concluding thoughts about the Titleist AVX golf ball. The first of those is we need to give Titleist credit. This golf ball did everything they said it would do. It delivered high short game spin. It kept up with the Pro V1 in that short game shot and in those full shots with the pitching wedge. Then as we moved up through the bag, it did offer low long game spin. We saw the drop off with the seven iron and again with the driver. They also promised a lower ball flight than the Pro V1 and we definitely saw that with the long game with the seven iron being a fraction lower and a significantly flatter lower ball flight with the driver as well. They also promised it would give a couple of extra yards and we've seen that in all aspects of the test and that it would feel incredibly soft compared to the Pro V1 and it definitely did feel like a softer golf ball. So we do need to start by giving Titleist a load of credit. It did everything they said it would do. That does take me on to my second concluding thought, which is I probably was expecting the difference between the Pro V1 and the AVX to be a little bit bigger than it is. And my actual concluding thought is that what Titleist are actually doing is saying, here's the Pro V1, it's middle of the road in terms of all round performance, but if you need to eke out a couple of extra yards, perhaps knock down that spin a little bit with a long game, or perhaps lower that ball flight, here, play the AVX. And probably with the Pro V1X, they're then saying, if you need to kind of increase that ball flight, add a little bit more spin, but you're happy to sacrifice a yard or two for it, play the Pro V1X. And hopefully I'll be able to prove that when I do my Pro V1X review in the next couple of weeks. So that leads me on to the question of would I game this golf ball? And for me, the answer is no, but that's absolutely nothing to do with the performance and the feel of the golf ball and all to do with the price point. As a 13 handicap golfer, I'm trying to balance price and performance with a golf ball because I do still lose them quite quickly. And I'm currently gaming the Bridgestone Tool B RX and at 38 pound a dozen, that does offer me the best overall package of what I need for my game. The performance might not be as good as these two golf balls, but it's not far behind and it's at a price point that I am comfortable paying and don't feel like crying every time I lose one in the trees or into the water. But I definitely think there'll be some of you guys watching this video down the lens who are happy to pay whatever it takes to get the best golf ball for your golf game. And if you already like or play the Pro V1, but are looking for some of those benefits that the AVX offers, then I definitely think this is a golf ball you should try because it is absolutely fantastic. And the good news normally with premium golf balls is you can buy a sleeve of them and give them a try and see what you think. And I definitely recommend that if you're liking this ball when you're watching this review. Final thing to say is I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. What do you think to the Titleist AVX? What do you think to the performance that we saw? I'd love to hear from all of you guys that asked me to film this review, what you thought as well. And if you like the video, please do smash that thumbs up button. It really does help me. And if you're not yet following Weekend Tour Pros, hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified of all my videos when they land. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.